welcome everyone in this lesson we will talk about fitting now what this means is for example after we detect canny edges as you can see in this picture can we fit lines uh, to those edges the red lines that you see so in the previous lessons we learned about how to detect edges corners and blobs now we must think about the next step so we would like to form a higher level more compact representation of the features in the image by grouping multiple features according to some simple model now here you can see parametric models have been fitted to represent uh, these features for example here the lines uh, here circles here uh, complicated shape to fit the car now this is slightly challenging uh, because even if we think about line detection there is noise in the measured feature locations and there is extraneous data for example if you want to detect the lines that define the car there are these lines that define the window that look similar because of the color then there can be missing data occlusions what that means is if you want to detect the lines that define the window it has been occluded due to the car now in this lesson we will look at least squares line fitting that means given a set of point how points how to fit a line then robustifying this fitting that means trying to handle the outliers then one of the very successful methods of doing that ransack and there are some other methods that are related to ransack and we will briefly talk about those also then half transforms uh, to fit lines circles and other structures and then the generalized half transform briefly okay so let's start with least squares line fitting now in this case you can see there is the set of points like this now what we want to do is to describe this set of points we want to fit this line y equals mx plus b so if this is the line that we have computed there is an error that we are making here so you can see that these are the errors and those errors we can minimize so that we would find the parameters of this line specifically m and b so the data set that we are given is x1 y1 up until xn yn the set of points and the line equation is yi equals mx plus b if you find these parameters m and b the points that you have in the data set should more or less fit to those so therefore this error measure which we have identified as this little length can be defined so you can see we have used the least square squares uh, so that when you minimize that we get the least squares line fitted uh, so i goes from one to n uh, because we have n points so this is equivalent to finding the least square solution uh, to this equation uh, so you can see in this case uh, x1 times m 1 times b uh, is equal to y1 and so on uh, so we can signify this matrix as x and then this vector as b and then this vector as y remember this matrix x has the vector of x coordinates and a vector of ones yeah and then a solution is given by x transpose xb equals x transpose y um, so so in this case we can write b is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y right So here to compute this we can use a pseudo inverse so is this a good solution um, actually the slope intercept parameterization pays for vertical lines as you can see here if you take this as the line and set of points like that 
then since m is infinity uh, this computation uh, fails as m tends to infinity a solution uh, is not rotation equivalent that means when the line rotates the solution does not properly rotate it does not work for vertical lines so therefore we are more interested in total least squares line fitting uh, here rather than taking the vertical distance uh, to the line we take the perpendicular distance so here the line parameterization is slightly different ax plus by is equal to d uh, so a b is a unit vector normal to the line and a squared plus b squared is equal to 1 in this case and d is the distance between the line and the origin uh, so for example if we uh, just draw a line like so and this distance from the origin to the line this is d uh, so any unit vector perpendicular to this line uh, is actually a b so perpendicular distance between point x i y i and the line a x b y equals d assuming a squared plus b squared d is equal to 1 is actually this one so we have to remember that modulus of axi plus byi minus d so we have a distance measure so therefore we can write the objective function like this and then minimize that uh, so we have to minimize that solve for d first uh, so we can uh, differentiate with respect to d and then we would have d as actually a times average b times average average of x and average of y uh, then plugging that back in um, to the original equation uh, we would get uh, something like this and then uh, you can see that this can be written as x1 minus x bar x bar is the mean um, and y bar is the mean of y uh, you will have a times x1 minus x bar b times y1 minus y bar so you can see this is the equation that we are represented here uh, and ab uh, so we have to find ab so if you want to minimize this to find ab you can see a trivial solution is correct right a equals 0 b equals 0 is correct but ensure we must ensure that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1 uh, as we saw previously because it's a unit vector uh, so therefore what we need to do is carrying out constraint optimization uh, so if this is u and this is n uh, so we want to find n that minimizes u in norm squared subject to n norm squared is equal to 1 so solution is given by the eigenvector of u transpose u associated with the smallest eigenvalue uh, so one method is to use this otherwise you can do constraint optimization constraint minimization of this using um, something like scipy minimize uh, in the uh, Python's uh, scipy library, we can use minimize function for this. Of course, you have to add the constraint. So it's uh, scipy. I hope I am spelling that right. Dot minimize. Yes. Okay, so this one uh, totally is square, so we can uh, write this uh, in more articulated form. It's called the second moment matrix, and then uh, you can see n is this one, and the distances are these. And yeah, I hope it is uh, clear to you. Okay, so now about robustifying. Now we have to see robustness of these models to noise. Now, least squares. Uh, uh, line fitting red points would uh, go like this so we will have the blue estimated line and red points are the points but we, when we have an outlier uh, this line gets totally this solution gets totally affected by this outlier because the distance between the line and the outlier is huge so therefore when you square it it's even larger so the outlier can totally uh, change the line uh, so problem squared error heavily finalizes outliers uh, so therefore we can have a, a function like this rho sigma so you can see when the error is growing like the horizontal axis error 2 4 6 8 10 the 
squared error heavily penalizes larges. For example, when the error is like 10, uh, the 10 squared is extremely large. But if you have a robustifying function like this, robustifying function like this, they do not, these functions uh, constrain the amount of penalization that you apply to large errors, as you can see. Yes. So nonlinear optimization problem that must be solved iteratively. So least square solution can be the use for the initialization. Uh, scale of the robustifying function, that means the sigma, uh, must be chosen carefully. So as you can see here, different sigmas give rise to different robustifying functions. Yeah. Uh, so choosing the right scale is important. So effect of outliers is minimized though. So um, when the sigma is too small, uh, then uh, the situation is like this. When sigma is too small, uh, you can see this uh, function is uh, sort of like that. Uh, so errors do not sort of affect even small, only the very small errors affect, errors affect this. Uh, so large errors, uh, uh, the error value is almost same for every point and fits uh, very poorly uh, because it is almost horizontal. So only small errors have an effect. Uh, then effect means a, a variation based on the error. Uh, so the, when the scale is too large, uh, beha behaves much the same as uh, the least squares. So you can see that from uh, the shape of the function, when the when it is too large, it looks like the least squares function. So we, it must be judiciously chosen. Uh, so least squares line fitting and robustifying. We looked at that. Now let's look at uh, uh, ransack. So robust fitting can deal with few outliers. If we have many outliers, then we have to use RANSAC. Uh, so basic idea, let each point vote for all the models that are compatible with it. Hopefully the outliers will not vote consistently for any single model. So we'll uh, look at this through animations. The model that receives the most votes is the best fit uh, to the image. Okay, let's see how, uh, how that works. Uh, so, random sample consensus is a very general framework for model fitting in the presence of outliers. Uh, so, the outline of random sample consensus algorithm is we randomly choose a small initial subset of points that can define a line. For example, for a line, we need to pick only two points, right? If you want to fit a circle, uh, of course, we need to pick, pick three points. And there are other structures like uh, homographies and then fundamental matrices and so on. So for homography, we need to fit pick four points, so like that. Uh, so then uh, using this subset of points, so for example here, uh, S is equal to, subset is equal to two, here S is equal to three points. So when we pick these points, we can fit the model, right? Find all in layers points that are close to the model and reject the rest as outlier. So we see that through the animation. Uh, so some of the points will confirm to the model that we selected based on this uh, sample. All of this are outliers. So do this as many times as possible and um, uh, choose the model with the most number of inliers. Okay. So first of all, let's uh, think about the least square fit. It is wrong because there are so many outliers. So let's pick two points. You can see the two points in red. This and that. And then there is this line. Do other points agree with this line? Only a small number of points agree with this line. So the errors are, are these when we fit uh, this blue line. And when we pick a threshold uh, defined by these two dotted lines, this, these two dotted lines, uh, you can see only few points agree with those, those that are in green agree. That's called the consensus. Consensus. Uh, so the consensus is small, so therefore we are not happy with that model. Pick another two points, the red points, find the consensus stays small. And then uh, another two points. And fortunately, if you pick two points like this, the consensus will be quite large. And therefore we pick that as a model. And then using the consensus, using all the green points, we uh, fit uh, the best line. That's the idea. So this is an uncontaminated sample. You can see that. So yeah, once again, if you pick the, another wrong point, so the, the, the consensus will be, the number of inliers will be less. Uh, then we had to retain the previous model that we selected. Okay, so 
uh, ransack choosing the parameters repeat n times draw s points uniformly at random for a line it's a 2 s is 2 then fit the model with these s points find inliers to the model among the remaining points points whose distance or residual with respect to the model is less than t so this t also has to be uh, selected by us if there are d or more inliers accept the model and refit using all inliers mm. i hope this idea is clear okay uh, so initial number of points s yes, uh, is well defined typically the minimum number needed to fit the model so distance threshold t for inliers must be equal to chosen need, needed to needed uh, suitable need suitable assumptions example given zero mean gaussian noise with standard deviation uh, sigma a t can be 1.96 sigma which gives 95 percent uh, probability of capturing all inliers uh, so 1.96 sigma so estimate the standard deviation and pick 1.96 of that and consensus of set size d should match expected inline ratio uh, number of samples n uh, so there is a formula choose n so that with probability p at least one random sample is free from outliers that is p is 0.99 assuming an outlier ratio e uh, so uh, this is the formula uh, to compute uh, n so i will uh, describe what this is uh, so in uh, you can see uh, outlier ratio is e that means um, inline ratio is 1 minus e right inline ratio of 1 minus e and um, if you pick two points for a line, that means the minimum number of points uh, to be able to compute the model, both of them must be inliers. So the probability of a correct sample, uncontaminated sample, is 1 minus e to the power of s. So probability of having at least one contaminated sample is one minus this value so it is not good uh, so now uh, probability of in probability of a contaminated sample even if we sample n times if it remains so then uh, we are with bad luck uh, so we repeat this n times this is the probability of a contaminated sample again and again our samples are contaminated so that must be equal to 1 minus p so from this you can compute uh, capital n yeah, like so okay so when you think about this when we uh, pick different points a line a circle a homography and maybe fundamental matrix and so on and when we pick uh, the outlier ratio e uh, as some number like for, for example 40 percent you can compute what your n capital n must be so you can have some idea about the number of samplings that you will have to do uh, related to the computational cost so you can see when um, this outlier ratio is uh, large the uh, number of ins that we have to do or the number of samplings that we have to do become uh, quite large okay so ransack uh, the good things are simple and general applicable to many uh, different problems often works well in practice cons lots of parameters tune doesn't work well for low inline ratios too many iterations so can fail completely can always get a good initial can't always get a good initialization of the model based on the minimum number of samples yeah uh, so we have completed ransack uh, so actually um, uh, there is a, an, a great improvement of RANSAC called, I think, MLESAC. MLESAC. So, if you want to use something like RANSAC, this is what you should be using. If you know about this, there's no reason why you should use RANSAC. Okay. Yes. So, we have covered uh, least squares line fitting. Uh, robust uh, defining that and ransack.